Well, hello, everybody. I'm really on shine on uh, Periscope. God bless you. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming on. This is just a quick message, real quick message, something that was in my mind and I wanted to talk to you guys about it. So do me a favor and please share. I'm going to be sharing on the other end. But while you're coming in, let me know where you're coming from. Let me know where you are coming from. This is Dr. Alexis here in Austin, Texas, and I'm so excited to be with you guys tonight. Real quick, just for a quick word that the Lord just dropped in my heart. God bless you. Nashville, Oklahoma in the house. Marshfield, Texas, how are you? God bless you. Mississippi, my husband's family is from Mississippi. Knoxville in the house. Long Beach, California. Hey, 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 God bless you, Chicago and Pennsylvania, Fort Hood, right down the street. God bless you, San Diego. How are you? God bless you. Everyone on, on Facebook, let me know where you're coming in from. Everyone coming in, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless everyone who's coming in. This is just going to be a quick broadcast, like I said, um, five reasons why you haven't launched what God told you to yet. Five reasons why. You have not launched. You have not launched. And hopefully this will help you get up out your seat and do something. That's what I'm about. I'm about doers and people who can take a vision that God has given them and turn it into something. I'm about people who are really serious about doing uh, serious about doing what God has given them to do. And so a lot of times when I'm around people who say, Hey, uh, Dr. Alexis, I want you to help me. I'm like, you must, you don't really want me to help you because when I get in your business or when I start to push you forward, we going to produce some results. And I get so many people inboxing me all the time saying, how can I do this? And how can I start this? How are you? Please share. If you're on Facebook, God bless you. Please share you guys share the broadcast. Thank you so much. I'm going to share this once again to a couple of other people, and it's going to be a quick message, nothing long, but I want to talk to you guys about some reasons why you have not done what God has asked you to do and how it is really stopping other people in the body from doing things that they're called to do because they're waiting on you to launch. They're waiting on you to launch. They're waiting on you to be bold enough to do what God has mandated. And as many of you who are watching me today, tonight, who know exactly what I'm talking about, and if you believe that this message is for someone else, I want you to go ahead and share it too. Even if you say, this is not me, I've launched everything God told me to do. I'm, I'm going, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. If it's not for you, then just sit here and watch. But if it is, it just sit here and watch and don't do anything. But if it is for you, I want you to share this broadcast with someone else so that they can hear this message that I believe that the Lord put in my heart just a couple of minutes ago. He said, tell them what I'm saying right now concerning this. Listen, a lot of you, God, God has given you a mandate. You've gotten a prophetic word. You've gotten someone to run around and pray for you. You know, your friends been shy. They've been pushing you all that stuff forward. You've been interceding, praying, fasting, all of that, all to launch what God has told you to do. But every year after year, you find yourself stuck. You're like, God, I don't know how to do it. I don't know what's going on. And I decided, I said, Alexis, get on here and talk about the five reasons why they haven't done this yet. So maybe they'll do something. So if you're on the broadcast on my Facebook, please share the broadcast with someone. Thank you guys so much from everywhere who is joining us. I'm so excited to talk with you. All right, let's get it cracking. Hallelujah. Five reasons why you have not launched what God said. Number one, you're afraid. You're afraid. You're afraid of what they're going to say about you. Uh, you're afraid that it won't do well. You're afraid that maybe no one will attend. You're afraid that you're not an expert. You say, what do I know? I don't know nothing about this. Who am I? You're afraid. You're allowing fear to come in and stop you from what God has told you to do. Listen, fear can stop all of us. Fear is like, to me, it's a high-ranking demon. It's a high-ranking spirit, if you will. And it is almost like it continues to, 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 to push us and, and, and into this corner. It's almost like you don't want to do nothing at all. You keep saying, well, I can't do this. I can't do that because of the fact that, you know, no one is 
is going to support me. No one even cares about what I'm doing. It's almost like you feel like you're stuck in this rut because of the fear, which is once again, false evidence appearing real as you guys know it, but it really has this hold on you. And you like, God, I just need to get out of this fear. I don't know why I'm so afraid. I don't know why I'm so afraid. And you find that uh, what, what uh, one of my friends had a dream the other day and I said, demons are turning into dinosaurs or demons really are dinosaurs. What does that mean? They come from something ancient. It's something old that's in your bloodline that causes you to have this fear, this false evidence appearing real. And it kind of keeps you still. It keeps you silent. It keeps you from doing anything that God has mandated you for you to do. But I'm here to tell you something tonight. God is still saying, I don't care. You're going to have to do it afraid. You're going to have to do it afraid. Why? Because I've mandated for you to do it. That's number one, you're afraid. Number two, you're trying to be perfect. And how many of you know perfection? Perfection is actually a spirit as well. It's a spirit of pride. When you're trying to be perfect in everything that you do, it's almost like you're being prideful in everything you do as well. God has not called us to be perfect individuals. There's only perfection in Christ. Perfection is not, you know, something that we need to strive for. When people continue to strive for perfection, it's almost like they're striving to be be better than someone else. We are only competition, and that's number five, but I'm going to get to that a little bit right now. The only competition that you have is with yourself. You don't need to compete with this girl and this woman down the street and wonder about what they doing over there and why they ain't doing it. Once again, thank you guys so much on Facebook who are sharing the broadcast, all of you who are on. You don't have to look at this person and that person and say, why are they doing it like this? And how come I'm not doing it like this? You know what I'm saying? You find yourself in that rut because you're trying to be perfect. I tell people all the time, you don't have to sit up here and launch anything that's perfect. Just launch something that's pure. You launch something that's pure and the rest is going to happen for you. You launch something that's pure, I'm telling you, God will get behind it. He's going to blow a wind on it. But pride, remember, pride comes before a fall. And really, pridefulness is imperfection. You don't need to launch anything that's perfect. People like say, oh, man, I'm trying to launch this, this book, and I'm trying to launch this. And I was talking to my friend earlier today, and I said, don't be perfect. You know, don't do that. Just do what God has told you to do. Let him be perfect because only he he is perfect, right? Allow him to do what he has called you to do. Uh, You just walk it out. He'll do the rest. That's number two. Hallelujah. Number three, you feel like you have no support. You feel like no one is there to support you. No one is going to push your vision. You feel like who is going to, you know, come and all of that. So you're like, I'm not going to launch anything because no one's going to support me. Listen to me, you guys. It don't matter if, if two people is there. Do it anyway. Do what God said anyway. And I'm telling you, remember, look at Tyler Perry. God blew a wind on what he was doing. He said two people used to be in there. It was so empty. You could roll a bowling ball and wouldn't hit nobody. But what? What happened? It blew up. It blew up and the same thing's going to happen for you. It don't matter how many show up. It don't matter. Like for instance, tonight, usually I might have a couple of hundred people on my broadcast tonight uh, combined. It's like a hundred and something, right? That still could kind of get you leery because you could like, man, I usually have this many people, but I'm not going to get that way. Why? Because I know that still I have a purpose to do. I have something to do and I have to get it out. I have to get the vision out. I have to get out what God said. Amen. And so do you. So don't worry about the support. Just know that if you do what God says, he was the one who will shift it. He's the one who will push it to the nations. He's the one. His word, see, he watches over his word to perform it. You don't watch over his word to perform it. That's, once again, you being a control freak. You want to control everything that you do. You want to control everything the way that the Lord moves. You want to control the when he's going to move, when he's going to blow on it. You want to control how he makes it work. A lot of you done got words about the nations 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 15 years ago. 10 years ago, but you ain't went to the nation, not because of God, but because of you. You are, God is waiting on you. You like, you like, I need to have this person request I come. I need to have that. No, you don't. You need to go ahead and say, God, you told me to go to the nations. You said you was going to do it. So once again, I'm not going to wait for a platform. I'm going to create it because you already spoke into my, into my life, what was going to happen. Now there's a difference here on just making things happen, right? You know, like you're not just going to go 
go outside of your God's will. But if he spoke something into your life that he wanted to be, then he wants you to create it. Obviously, he believes that you have the tool set inside of you to create it. Hallelujah. And that's another thing. Toolkit. That's number four. So number one is that you're afraid. Number two is that you're trying to be perfect and perfection is pride, okay? Number three, you feel like you have no support. You're kind of like you're walking in the dark. Nobody is here to help me, hallelujah. Number four, you have no resources. You, may, you have not launched yet because you say, I have no resources to do so. What am I going to do with the resources? How am I going to get this? I don't know how this person does this. Listen, you guys, I just launched uh, four books in the last four months. Started a publishing company because I found out that people don't know what they're, they don't know what to do. And it's really simple. It's not, I'm not special because I can start a publishing company. No, I just do. I just believe God. I used to try to give away. I tried to give away my ideas for years. I gave away the idea for publishing company. I gave it away to big pastors. They didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I said, well, God, why not me? Why not? Why not me? Right? right? You, I spoke it into the atmosphere. You spoke it to me. Now it's going to be manifested because I, I believe you enough to do it. I believe you enough to get a website. I, I believe you enough to find out how to do the website myself. I believe you enough to go onto Canva or something and make a flyer. I believe you enough to contact somebody who, if I don't know how to do it, find somebody who knows how to do it. The resources you guys are on, you ask somebody for the resources. I'm open book with my resources. Listen, you, you over there spending $5,000, $1,000 on editing. Let me show you how you can do it for quicker. You over here doing this and this. Let me show you how you can get that book done. Let me show you how you can launch because a lot of you is stuck in a rut. And God did not call me to be a woman who can pull people out, midwife people literally, and literally check the receipts for me to be sitting up here and looking at just all these women following in the ministry, all these men who sitting on a gift that God had given them. It's not right. It's not right. It's, it's, it's wrong. It's, it's literally wrong to see so many people holding on to a vision that God has told them to launch. So many people holding on to something that God told you years ago you were supposed to do. But you didn't allow fear. You didn't allow perfection. You have allowed no support and no resources. And lastly, you've allowed competition competition to cause you to stop competition to cause you not to do what god mandated i don't care about what she doing over there i don't care about what he's doing over there we all winning we all are winning that means our whole circle is winning everybody is going to get it you know you look at the sister who just got a million dollars in a cut in an hour on a uh, black friday and she sold her makeup line at a million dollars in an hour and i'm sitting here thinking wow guy there's a million makeup lines but she made a million dollars in an hour why not you as kingdom people why not you why can't you do that i don't care if somebody else got a hairline i don't care if they got a makeup line i don't care if they got an eyelash line. I don't care what they're doing. It doesn't matter to me. All that matters is what God is doing with you in you. And there's not a lot of people in the kingdom doing these type of things. We see people that we look up at like, oh my gosh, look at what they're doing on media or social media, but they're not honoring the same God that we're honoring. So since God said he's not a respecter of persons and the rain shall rain on the just and unjust alike, meaning it, it the, both the scales, right? It, it both, it can, it can go either way. I'm saying, God, the same blessings that you did for her, sister over there, an old buddy over there, is the same thing that you can do right here in my house. It's the same thing that you can do for the vision that you've given me. God, you're not a respecter of persons. God, I know what you called me to do. So I don't care about no competition. I don't care about no competition when I'm in Christ. Why? Because Christ won it all. He did it all. Listen, ain't no stopping Christ. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. What does that mean to me? That means, come on, what the word say? He is the author of my book. Come on, he is the author. He leads me. He guides me. He is the one. He's going to finish it. If you turn to the end of the book, we win. But in order for us to win, we got to get it cracking and finish everything that he said. So I don't want you to be looking at this year, looking around saying, man, I wish. 
I wish I would have done that. Oh, man. Come on. Don't look at me and say, man, she finished four books in, in, in a couple of months. I, I, that, that'll never be me. I don't have nobody to support me. So I decided to do something. The Launch Her Challenge. Launch Her Challenge. Launch Challenge. And this is particularly for women, but if you're a man, you can do it as well. But I want you guys to meet me in Dallas, Texas. I want you to meet me on the 21st of March. We're going to launch together, multi-launch. Now, a lot of people say, I don't have the support. Well, there's going to be 200 women there to support one another. And we're going to launch together. If you have something that you've been working on and you're like, man, I just don't know when to do it. Come to All Things Her. And on the first day, on Thursday, we're going to launch together. We're going to start together. We're going to finish together. There's no reason why this first quarter you can't launch your vision. There's no reason why I should still hear you talking about there's no one in the industry. There's nobody in ministry who will help me. I'm going to help you. Why? Because I'm going to challenge you. I challenge you. I challenge you to launch something. I don't care if it's a t-shirt. I don't care if it's a book. I don't care if it's a book bag. I don't care if it's a lip gloss. I don't care if it's nail polish. I don't care what it is. Get whatever it is. Bring it to all things her. We're going to launch together and it's going to be a multi-launch. What is that? Where all of us is winning. The word of God. Let me tell you what the scripture says, you guys. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you to everyone who's watching and everyone who is sharing. Psalm 68 and 11 says, the Lord announces the word and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. Good news translation says the Lord gave the command and many women carried the news. Another scripture says another another um, version. King James says the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women who published it. Great was the company of of women who published it great listen to me was the company who are you you're a company god is calling you to something he's mandating you to something great is the company of women women have power this is the listen this is the century of women and God is pushing you forward, even like Miriam. Miriam went forward with her dance. Come on. Some of you got to dance. You got to launch. You got to dance school. You got to launch. You got something that you need that's inside of you. You just need somewhere to say, I got to do it. And this is what I know about people. If you come empty handed, you're going to feel, you're going to be like, man, I should have had something. So if someone challenges you, you got to do it. You got to get it out. You're going to thank me for this later. You're going to thank me for it later. You're going to say, you know what, Dr. Alexis, I appreciate you because you helped me get it out. I appreciate you because without you, it's really without the Lord. But God is using me as a conduit to challenge you to do something other than talk. Where I'm from, we say, don't talk about it, be about it. We say, don't talk about it, be about it. Is you really about it or are you just talking? Come on, selling wolf tickets. We, we don't do that around here. And if I got to push you into destiny to make you do what God said do, well, here we go. Here we go. And so I haven't seen too many people in the body come together as a company. You know, as a company, there's, there's more power in two of us and three of us. There's more power in us coming together to get it together. So I'm having a conference anyway. I thought about this a year ago. I don't know if any of you followed me when last year I talked about a launch club. And I said this morning, I said, why not just launch together? Because I said, I'm going to launch my book there. We, we just did a book called Un, uh, Unmuzzle Her. And eight of us came together and wrote the book. That helped eight, seven women become new authors because I made them. Come on. This is what we're going to do. Holy Spirit gave a mandate. This is what we're going to do. Now they're published. I told them, each of you need to take a brand new picture. Each of you need to do this. They followed the instructions. Listen, prophetic instructions aren't just Oh, listen, um, just, you could just don't, don't do them. When, when, when the, when the prophet said, go dip in the water and you're going to be healed. He listened to the prophet and what he said, do and what he got healed. Now I'm not saying I'm not doing like, oh man, this is going to, well, in, in a way it, it can heal you. Honestly, it can. What is inside of you that can heal somebody down the street? What is inside of you that is going to heal you? 
Great is the company of women who published it. Great is it. Come on. All night long, I want you to say, great is the company of women who carry the good news. And the good news is in whatever God has told you to do. So I am challenging you to register to All Things Her. You can register right now, allthingsher.com, all things hers. Somebody type that in the inbox, allthingshers.com. Meet me in Dallas, Texas on March the 21st. It's going to be 200 women there. Right now we're at 100 and something women. So only 200 women there where you can say, you know what, we launched together. One of the, one of my sister friends, uh, she's a she's a woman who took my class and and uh, the prophetic class. That's how I ended up launching the the, the book. Um, I muzzle her. She took the class and she had a dream that all of us jumped out of a plane together. We jumped out of a plane and we went skydiving. What does that mean? That means we're jumping together. We're leaping together. We're going to leap and hand, land on our feet. We're going to leap and land on our feet. We're going to do what God mandated us to do. So I want you to take a step of faith tonight. Take a step of faith this week. Take it tonight and register for this conference. Listen, this ain't no regular conference. I don't like that stuff. I want everyone to be highlighted. So how, what is the best way I can do that? I can say all of you, 200 women who are coming, launch with me. I'm putting, you to, I'm putting it to the test. I'm challenging you. If you really are about it, if you really believe the word that was spoke over your life and you tired of waiting year after year, then tonight say, I'm going to take the first step and register. The next step I'm going to take is I'm going to start working on whatever God told me to. I'm going to get the resource. I'm going to get whatever I need because come March 21st, I'm going to have my stuff ready to launch. And I'm serious. If you're serious, now this is only for serious people. Like if you're not serious, this may not be a message for you because you know a lot of people don't be serious and working with me, listen, I don't even think hard. I don't think hard I, when I, I don't think hard and I don't think long when it comes to launching something. I say, God, you said do it, it's launched within two minutes. I launched my biggest conference, which was 4,000 people. I got the idea, the vision came to my head. I launched that conference literally in 30 minutes. I had a guy call the guy, do a flyer. By that night, the flyer was out. Some of you guys went to that conference. It was called Reset. That was the biggest conference I ever did. The Lord gave me the vision as soon as I seen Apostle John Eckhart talking. I said, God, if you use me to launch major leaders, then surely you'll use me to launch everyday people. Because I'm, I used to call, remember when I used to first come on Periscope, I used to call myself the people's prophet. And I'm still here for the people. I'm still here for the people because a lot of people forget about the people. They forget that they exist, right? They're like, oh, I'm some big person and I want to prophesy to you. Like, forget that. I don't need another prophetic word. What I need is prophetic action. What does that mean? I need you to get up, get out and get something. I need you to do something other than talk. Do something. And that's for you, April. God bless you, Shasta, Tara. That's especially for you, Naya, Jamila. Come on. You done waited long enough. Come on. You done waited for years. You done cried tears. You done looked at other sisters. Why she doing that? She got that. Come on. Nah, time is now. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for you to shine. It's time for you to get out and get something. It's time for you to do what God said. It's time for you to stop being afraid. It's time for you. And you know, the first step is saying, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm about to get to this conference. Listen. I don't know too many people who will say, let me share a platform with you. Let me share a platform with you. I don't know too many people like that. But you know what? The other day I did a teaching on mean girls, right? And I was talking about mean girls and how mean girls get on my nerves and all of that. And I was thinking, so what do you do? So what's the action, Alexis? We can talk about mean girls in ministry, but what's the action? Well, the action is to create a space where it's not mean girls. The action is to create a space where it says, you know what, it's all love, sis. Let's get it cracking. Let's come together. Let's do something for the kingdom. It's all love. Let's do something greater than ourselves. And so, as you guys know, like you know me, I I, I don't wait for things. I don't, I don't, I don't. Now I do wait when the Lord says, wait, I waited on a husband, right? But um, 
I created. I don't wait for no platform. I created. So I want to create and share. We've already, we just visited Dallas this past weekend. We're going to be at the Sheraton Hotel. If you guys need hotels, you know it's at the Sheraton and you can hold your room at the Sheraton. Tickets are really cheap right now to come to Dallas, Texas. DFW, DFW and Dallas Love Field is the cheapest, one of the cheapest places to fly into. Listen, you guys, this is not a gimmick. This is none of that. It's cheap. It's not even, the tickets aren't even that much. But the point is, is that I, if I was you, if I were you, I would say, God, this is my seed into myself. Many of you sow into everything else. You, 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 you sow thousands of dollars into a minister, but you don't sow into yourself. The other day I, I, I went and um, we, we rented a car so that we can go and pick up our friends in, in Dallas. And we rented a, 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 a Benz truck. And my husband said, well, why did you rent that? That was a little bit extra. I said, because I'm sowing a seed into myself. Because I'm believing God that everything I'm going to do is luxury. Not that I'm caught up in things, but I'm prophesying into myself. Because I know that God has the exceedingly, exceedingly, come on, it's exceedingly beyond what I can think, right? Exceedingly and abundantly more than I can think or ask. And so God wants us to move forward. God wants us to do something greater. And if you are ready to do it for real, I don't know if y'all for real, but some, somebody on here is for real. Then take the challenge, the launch her challenge. It's going to be dope. It's going to be cool. 200, 200, of, 200 of us from all over the world launching. That's powerful. And even if you can't get to the conference, that's a date, March 21st that I want you to have out whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing. Launch her challenge. Share this with your friends, you guys. Launch her challenge. See you guys in Dallas, Texas. Register at allthingshers.com. It's going to be off the chain. And I can't wait to see what God's going to do in our life. How many times you, you, you listen to that song? I'm getting ready to see something i never seen. I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, I, we sing that. But how can you do that unless you actually do something? Right? Launch her challenge. Dallas, Texas. The 21st of March. <coughs> Excuse me. Listen. I'll see you guys there, okay? Love you guys. Bye now.